Miami is like just universally known for being like the flashiest place in the country. I, I don't think there's a flashier place. Hollywood is not as flashy as Miami. From the sound and fun capital of the world, Miami Beach. It, it's the center of flossing. You think about people that are just driving Lamborghinis. You think about Miami. It's America's Casablanca. I've been a newsman in this community for 35 years and seen the area go through a great deal of change. In the 50s, Miami Beach was more than just a city. It was America's playground. Miami Beach had its own pulse and personality. It was the hub of Greater Miami. Miami means so much to me in so many ways. It is not just the place that I was born in, but you have to understand that my ties to Miami go extremely, extremely deep. One of my first dates, my dad uh, let me use a Ferrari 348 Spider, which was, which was awesome. But my first time driving a Diablo was Mike Tyson's Diablo Roadster that my father sold to him that we traded back. And I remember getting in the vehicle and being so amazed that my father allowed me to actually drive a Lamborghini around the dealership. Miami has become a hypercar hub, a supercar hub. The cars, without doubt, are the main attraction here. Lots and lots of collections here, lots of hidden away private garages. Some of the biggest collections that I've seen are located here. There's a lot of money in Miami now. People aren't afraid to, to spend and to say, look, this is the biggest and best car. This is the fastest car. And it's just a place where you can see cars that you wouldn't even dream of seeing your wildest dreams. they do is they take out a cell phone and they'll run up to the car to take pictures and the drivers in South Florida love that and allow that and engage with the community. There's a huge influence I would say from Instagram and you have all these iconic photos of people using their cars out and about in Miami but there's such a car culture here that's so important. It's the weather, it's driving down Ocean Drive, it's a sensory experience of being able to appreciate one of these cars in Miami. This is one of the only cities in the world, next to California per se, where you can get a group of automotive guys together just to go to lunch, five, 10, 15, 20 guys, and take over a restaurant with some of your crazy exotic cars. And that's because Miami and its community allow that. Look at Miami Vice, it set the tone for the 80s. That television show of having Crockett and Tubbs race around Florida in this beautiful white Testarossa or the black Ferrari. Fashion, the cars, it was a unique yet defining moment for Miami in its automotive culture. Because when you still look at a white Testarossa today, the first thing you think of is Miami Vice. There was a great scene of a white, white Countach, one of the villains driving, and, and that car is currently in Europe. It's repainted in red, and I'm, I was trying to buy it. I mean, it's, it's definitely a piece of history. I've seen an unbelievable amount of cars driving around. Miami feels like, as you say, Monaco, uh, Dubai, London as well. My favorite, favorite road is 395. Old Cutler Road, that whole area by the Botanical Gardens. Wow. Rickenbacker Causeway driving down into Key Biscayne. It's such an iconic road for me. With water on both sides, lined with palm trees in a convertible. Nighttime with the cityscape and the light shining over Brooklyn, Miami with the water in front. Feeling that manual six gate shifting. And it's just, it's stunning. And there was one specific time my father and I were in a 1999 Millennium Edition Diablo Roadster and we cruised down 395 listening to Phil Collins and hearing him sing the song, look around him, see the excitement in his face in the palm trees. I still get goosebumps today remembering that time and still till this day. That's one of my favorite, favorite roads to drive on. Was it the, the famous Miami Vice song? Uh, of course. In the air tonight. In the air tonight. <laughs>